Board of Managers, um, April of 2017. Mr. Randall, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Patterson? Here. Mr. Conley? Here. Mr. Marvel? Here. Mr. Schweitzer? Here. Mr. Bennett? Here. Uh, Mr. Crapo? Ms. Evans? Um, and Steve Witt has resigned. Yes. Um, since you brought that up, I'm going to add this to the agenda since the next question is any additions or revisions to the agenda. Um, this is an email that I got from Steve dated April the 11th, 2022. Uh, Dear John, please accept this correspondence as my resignation from the Capital Improvement Board of Managers effective immediately. I appreciate the opportunity to serve with and wish the organization the best going forward. Very Steve Witt. Steve is uh, or was Mayor Bennett's appointment and the mayor will be making a new appointment uh, shortly. Any questions? Do we need to make a motion to accept this resignation? I'm sorry. Do we need to make a motion to accept this resignation? Um, you want to wait until we wait his, his appointments re made? Yeah, I would. Uh, he, he was serving on the museum committee with Terry, and I would like to serve on that committee if it's all right with the rest of the board and Steve's place. Okay. Um, as usual, Karen uh, got out the approval or the, the minutes very quickly last month uh, to get approval of the minutes. Has, has everybody on the board had a chance to look at it? Mm -hmm. The chair will entertain a motion to approve. So There's a motion been made and seconded to approve the minutes of March the 16th. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The Neural Business, an update on construction decision by Garmon Construction Services. Brian Koyster is not here today, but he's in his uh, Low Hill uh, <laughs> manager to the uh, Martin Barrel part. Yep, uh, not a whole lot here. Uh, punch list, we're down to two items. Uh, third screens and hail guards on the rooftop units. Uh, so that's that. Uh, Close out documents. John, I told you that uh, we submitted the final one. So we just got back the review closeouts from CSO yesterday. So we got a couple revisions to resubmit to them uh, before those will be wrapped up. So that's probably, honestly, it's probably like two weeks before we'll get them turned over to you finally. And also, um, other than that, that's that's sort of the construction that we have. So. Any questions? Short construction update. We have a picture. All right, you might. An update on the convention center management, Jenny. Sure. And before you get started, Jenny. Yes. I speak on behalf of the whole board and what you've done with three events that we've had here has been nothing less than spectacular. Thank you. It, it showed the citizens. What kind of food we're presenting and what the building looks like. Well, I for one appreciate what you've done, and I'm sure the rest of the board does too. Well, we have a great staff, and it takes a team of people and a lot of hard work, and they've all worked really hard, so we appreciate that. We know you have. Thank you. Um, so I've got up on the screen, you can kind of see, uh, we had, so we had, I've got two events in here that I, I'll have um, some photos that I can run through. Um, Thursday, April 7th, we had our stakeholders dinner. We had close to 100 folks that attended that event. Um, a lot of folks that were just really closely associated with the making of the convention center, the conception, and everything um, going way back. And then we had our public grand opening on Saturday the 9th. And we, we feel like we maybe had around 800 to 1,000 folks that attended that opening for the three hours that, that we were um, we were here. So I just have some images up here that kind of go through the, those two evenings. I don't have anything from the gala yet, but I'm just kind of 
see some of them here. I think we probably had at least um, 100 to 200 people that were outside that morning for the ribbon cutting. We had Abby Scott who sang the national anthem, did a beautiful job. We had a color guard from Rose Holman that was here. Some great speaking sessions from all our um, board members. I think we had 32 vendors that purchased goose. Um, so as folks came in, they were able to go through and kind of mingle with um, the folks that were our local businesses that were here. They had food sampling. Um, we also had ISU basketball students that were outside playing ball in the streets, which was kind of neat to see. Um, and then the, uh, the Children's Museum was also here they were under the tent outside doing some uh, projects with the kids. We had uh, the um, SRT vehicles and the canine unit here. It was just a lot of fun. So it was a really fun day for everyone and you know, unlike a banquet where our team is really on their feet just servicing, our team really got to be able to just kind of interact with folks and so I think everyone had a lot of fun that day. Um, the great opening dinner took place on the 23rd. Um, our keynote speaker was Elaine, uh, Elaine Beadle. She really talked about tourism in Indiana and the economic value that um, that we have the opportunities we have to capture on uh, that those tourism dollars that are being spent. Um, it's a 30, 30 million dollar industry here in Indiana alone, and so we all have an opportunity to capture that. Um, the MC was uh, Channel 2's anchor woman Dana Winkleplatz. She did a really great job um, introducing everyone as they came on stage. As folks entered, we had a red carpet area, so folks could come down, they could get a drink, and then had a nice photo op. Um, and then we had a silent auction. I think we had like 26 gift baskets that were auctioned off that evening, and I think there was about $2,000 raised that went to the Wabash Valley Breast Cancer Survivors um, Organization. So just a really well attended event. We set for 300 that night. I think we had about 280 um, like 286, I think is what, what we had shown. 
operations through the month of March. We had we had a lot of training finishing up on the majority of our owners' training, kitchen equipment, our ovens, the tilt skillets, dishwashers, and such, the hood system, um, elevator training, and phone training through joint. Um, we had a lot of new employee interviews, which was ongoing and will be ongoing as you know we have a lot of part-time staff that we'll hire. So that'll be one of the things that we'll always have housekeeping and operations staff that we'll be hiring for. Um, FF&E, well, most of our orders were received through the month of March. So we had a lot of cards and equipments, equipment that needed to be assembled, lots of cardboard recycling. We went through tons and tons of cardboard. We filled those downstairs quite a few times. Um, and a lot of cleaning in the facility. Still continue with on-site visits. Um, we had the Terre Haute uh, Fire Department came, we actually had, we had them come out a couple times with different fire stations coming through, and I think we actually had the SWAT team that came out as well, went through the whole building, just kind of look at every nook and cranny, if anything, you know, if they ever needed to come in, where would, where they need to go and look, and so they kind of went through um, like a whole visual search for them. Um, few outstanding items that we still have when it comes to FF&E and such is our radios. We have some six-foot tables on back order, cocktail tables, buffet tables, and then some basic maintenance items. Um, finance and HR. We recently filled a few positions, so most of you have met our executive chef, Sunny Workman. So she's been here through all of our food and beverage events that we've had. She started in March. She's doing really, really well. We're so excited to have her. Um, we have a new banquet manager that just started this past week. His name is Ian Pinwell. Um, he was here for the uh, gala the other night, did an amazing job for his first week. And we have a sales manager that's starting in the beginning of May. Her name is Shelby Reed. Um, so we're really excited to be able to fill that position that kind of alleviates a little bit of um, stress from our director of sales and marketing, so she's not taking on all of the, the proposals. Um, since our opening, we have had an abundance of leads come in, so it's it's kind of been time consuming trying to keep up with all the leads that we're getting. So it's a um, really great problem. Um, interviewing, we're still interviewing for a marketing slash administrative assistant. We've got a few more interviews that we're going through now. We did have a candidate for this position, but they. Um, Took another job elsewhere, so we reopened up that position. And then we will continue to hire for part time line cooks, kitchen stewards, banquet servers, operations setup, and housekeeping. Um, we currently have seven full time uh, employees and then 19 part time employees. When we have banquet functions that have uh, a, a need for more staff, we've been using the local temp agencies and we've had a lot of success with them. So, very pleased to say that. Um, we hosted a hiring fair uh, early in March and we did have a few hires from that fair. We didn't have a lot of folks show up for that so we were a little disappointed in you know, the lack of people that, that came to that event but um, we did get some quality employees out of it which was really good. Um, as far as uh, finance, we have, our point of, we have a point of sale that we use for um, running credit cards, when we do cash bars and such, we use a system called EPOS, so we went through a lot of training for that. Cartel had to work, she's worked really hard on trying to get that system up and running. Um, payroll is now being paid directly from the operating account. For um, all the FF&E, Martel had to fill out every application, every credit app that we had to do, so all the paperwork, every purchase order, every check that had to be written the past month has been on Martel, so we constantly tried to to let her know how much we appreciate her. Um, finance is not an easy job. Um, and then that's setting up every single account in our accounting system. So, not an easy task. As far as food and beverage, we have, I wanted to kind of let you know, you know, all the accounts that we have set up. Um, we work with b, &B Foods, U.S. Foods, Gordon Food Service, What, Chef, it's what Chefs Wants, um, Piazza, which is um, a produce company. Um, we've been getting our rolls from Breadworks. And then we have Pepsi, Zinc, who is our beer distributor, Monarch, and RNDC, which is liquor and wine, Southern Glaciers, and Johnson Brothers. So we've got uh, quite a few options for food and beverage items. 
And I will tell you that our local vendors, b and and Gordon's, has just been exceptional to work with, and we've actually been using them more than we have U.S. Foods. Um, they've really stepped up to the table, and they, they're here every step of the way. You know, we talk to our reps all the time, and it really makes a difference, you know, having some really good local vendors. To hear that. Yes. Um, as far as kitchen, dinner, and small wares, you know, the bulk of our items re were received in March. We do have some things that are still out outstanding, um, but through March, most of those items came on Big Semi. Um, we had pallets and pallets of stuff in the ballroom. It took a lot of weekends and nights to go through and um, really just kind of go through and unbox everything, and everything had to be washed. So we just kind of wanted to, like, kind of give you an idea of what that is. We had um, almost 7,000 pieces of silverware that had to be washed, and each set, so you had cases of silverware, each case had little boxes of 12. Every box had 12 pieces of silverware that was individually wrapped in plastic. So it literally took five of us, probably five hours, unwrapping every single piece of silverware and then running it through the dishwasher and, and that was we wrote that was probably a 12 hour day that day into the evening and going through um, I think we unboxed about 1500 glasses that day and we ordered we probably had about 9200 pieces of china that we ordered but we unboxed half of it so that getting all that through the dishwasher probably took probably four or five days to just get silverware china glasses unboxed through the dishwasher. Um, our operations manager wasn't happy when he came in the next morning and saw the cardboard, but um, it's a lot of work, you know, when it comes to taking all of this in because every little bit of the building has to be stopped. And so every everything that we eat off that, you know, gets consumed, you know, it, it all has to be washed, you know, either hand washed or run through the dishwasher. Um, our event manager, Lucy uh, Utterbach, spent several days in St. Charles to work with our senior event managers there. She was able to get a better understanding of detail and men. Unfortunately, she really started telling me how to do the therapy here. So I said, give her a good understanding about law, what will happen to customer, you know, talk to clients there in that building, sit in on the social hall, sit in the coach, and she needs to really understand. How do you tell the how we should run, look at the security, the timing, the agenda, the things like that. She's teaching that with a whole lot of knowledge, and we're able to start coming down to get our process. Finally, Lucy also retained or obtained their uh, Surf Safe Food Manager certificate last month as well. A few outstanding items that we have in the food and beverage sites. We've got two upright fridges that should be here in May. So, right now, there's two temporary fridges in the um, kitchen, so those will go away when our new ones come in. We have five dish dollies that are coming in May, and then we've got 480 plate capacity hot boxes that should be here in May as well. Um, still an ice bin for the catering room, and then our flash bars we actually just received the other day, um, so we use those for the function that we had. And then all of our, a lot of our glasses that we ordered, we had to buy one, get one. So what we purchased, we'd already received, but all the free glasses are still set to ship to us. So. We think those are going to be here in the middle of May. So we have enough right now to get us through. Um, and then just like little little items, kitchen strainers, utensils, things like that, just <laughs> random items that are just sitting on back order for some reason. The um, Terre Haute Convention Center is celebrating their grand opening this Saturday. Sorry, did not have the um, So this is some of the advertising that went on during the month of March. So we had a lot of podcasts and radio. Um, through Mix FM, we promoted the grand opening. It was on TV, radio, Facebook. Um, we also had a full page ad in Terre Haute Magazine promoting weddings. Um, we are in Midwest meetings on their .com as well as their printed issue. We had an ad in the Trip Star, and then just various advertising partners. Our digital initiatives were with uh, W2WO. We did a digital campaign with them. Uh, focus on women in Evansville. We are part of the Evansville Chamber, so we've been trying to market to Evansville and Bloomington also to try to pull some of those meetings here. And we've actually just recently had both chambers come down and visit the convention center, so they're all they're all kind of excited about the opportunities to do things here too. Um, 
we've got uh, Cvent and Eventactive are two online platforms that we use to receive leads. They're um, kind of like lead catchers. They're uh, basically websites that a meeting planner goes to to look for space. So we're continuing to lead to receive a lot of leads through those two um, two online companies. And um, we, we're still running our small meetings special. Um, let's see what else. The chamber assisted with our hiring fair and our business ex expo and our grand opening, and then Pepsi was a sponsor of um, two weeks worth of uh, advertising for our grand opening as well, which was part of our agreement with them. Community initiatives. We hosted an, an appreciation breakfast for Garmon. Um, one, one morning we just, you know, kind of becomes an afterthought. We work with them every day and we, we thought, you know, if they're getting ready to leave the building, let's host breakfast for them. So we had a breakfast one morning so we could all just sit down. Um, we had a collaboration lunch meeting with WTWO and um, the uh, folks with the casino and the mill to kind of talk about, you know, what can we do together as um, business opportunities to help bring in more meetings and how can we work together in the future once the casino is here. So we had a really good meeting with them. Sponsorship and partnership development. We've sent uh, proposals to sponsors for um, previously from the hometown savings bank. We were trying to get a banking sponsorship there, and um, that one did not. It didn't pan out. But we're still looking for future sponsors in the building. And then in March we had a March Madness sales blitz. So we had these little basketball hoops, and uh, we had a video that was running on Facebook, but. We basically went around to local offices. I think they had a couple hundred offices, um, Pam and Nate did, and dropped off these hoops during the month of March to um, really kind of drive home, you know, uh, having meetings here for, for the facility. So we like to tie in sales blitzes <coughs> to whether it is um, something going on in the community or a national holiday, something fun, so it's a little bit catchy, so folks kind of start to think about us. And these were little basketballs that someone can put in their office and kind of, you know, when they're sitting at their desk, they guess we'll always see our logo. We have lots of site tours this past month. Um, we had the State Rotary Annual Conference um, came in to, to tour the facility, St. Mary's of the Woods, Indiana Square Round Dance Convention, the Will Center Holiday Inn uh, came in, b, &B Foods, um, TABCO, Department of Child Services, FSA Counseling, just lots of different organizations continue to come in and look at the facility for future meetings. And then there's just some clips in here of um, what we've seen, you know, on social media, um, in the paper, about the convention center. And then getting to numbers. For 2022, we have 15 definite events, which total 235 hotel rooms, and um, will generate a little over, close to 100,000. Um, we've got 12 contracts that are still out that haven't been returned, which will generate 340 rooms with another close to 55,000 in revenue. And then our tentative business, we have almost 50 contracts that are just out in tentative business. And these are, these are leads that we've We've received a lead or they prospected and we've sent them a proposal. So it's just it's on our calendar, but it's not firmed up yet. So we've got about $165,000 in business there. So for 2023, we have three definite contracts totaling 80,000 in revenue. And we've got 14 tentative uh, proposals that are out totaling another 100,000. <coughs> and then you can see 2024, we have a little less because it's a little further out, but we've got um, one contract that has been issued, not returned yet, and then we've got three tentative events. So looking at our total funnel, we have over $550,000 in potential business over the course of three years. So we continue to grow that number month over month. Um, and then you can just see at the bottom some of the, um, some of the high profile events. A lot of these have, have remained the same, and as we get more contracts in, we'll, we'll add to that and some of these will drop off. Any questions? I have a question, but maybe more for the mayor than to me. Um, received no complaints of any of the events, but one concern that came my way was how in the heck do people get to the parking garage? So I know you're working on wayfinding. 
but there were a lot of people that came down the wall back to kind of turned in right here and thought they could get into the parking garage. So I didn't know if you could put like a sign underneath the stoplight down there that said convention center parking with an arrow pointing to the north to get them around Cherry Street, or that could be a sidewalk thing. Or yeah, we could probably do both. Uh, I need to get with the folks that are doing the wayfinding signage. Yeah. These are supposed to be implementing it this summer, and I haven't heard anything recently. Um, and it may be a combination of those signs, the bigger signs that direct people towards the major venues, like a parking garage in this building, and then smaller stuff to supplement that. Um, I really need to kind of know what their plan is first, and I know the Board of Public Works is waiting on the specific locations, and if we can back fill feed into that in phase one so let me work on that it's just an idea yeah. I thought we can make the because those signs we can make it street park put up you know same day but that's easy it's just knowing where we can look because for folks coming from out of town maybe from India they're turn mm -hmm. I'm not sure maybe at that stoplight they would see mm -hmm. convention center parking you know there's the garage we need some public parking so or sure. revenue <laughs> You know, and just to speak to parking too, when you come out of the garage, when you come out of the garage onto Cherry Street, um, I feel like there needs to be a one-way sign right across the street. So when folks pull out, they know, I mean, we can put one inside the garage, but I don't know that it will be seen as well, but when they pull out to see a sign that points one direction, and I know they have the new stoplights that are in right there at the corner, but twice I've seen a car pull out of the garage or from the work one and go straight down the, that one-way road. Um, so I know that on the on one side it does say do not enter, but it might need to be posted on both sides. We're just giving you some extra work. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got it. Well, fix for the next meeting. Can you thank you. Uh, Action 5.3, an update on the project budget with Chase and Stemler from Baker Tilly. I believe you've received the, the monthly uh, reports uh, earlier this week, so they're similar. Uh, kind of budget comparison. Uh, you see there's about $3.6 million remaining in the budget that hasn't been spent yet. I imagine I'll be in the finance meeting this morning. But that number will uh, for the next uh, next.
John Mullins of Nations. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. And yeah, as the Convention Center projects about completed at this point, so is our excuse me, contract. We'll continue just to review any applications and invoices and forward them over and then turn them over to Black and Tammy or whomever else uh, will need to review and approve those and coordinate to close out documents from our model and spectra. So all the operations, maintenance, manual, warranty documents. That's really about it. Well, we want to thank uh, Chris, and certainly you, and uh, everybody else from your company that's been in between. Um, we've got a beautiful building, and that's all we hear is how good the food is, you know, what a nice building you built. We thank you very much. Um, item 5.5 is an update on the bird music with Terry. Yes, um, we've had several meetings on the museum. Um, Mark Majerski is here with us today. Uh, Mark is our owner rep uh, for the museum and uh, holds meetings every two weeks. And I'll give him a chance here in a second if, if you want to add anything to, to the report. Uh, John and Mark and myself uh, met with the Hilferty group on April 22nd, and um, we did receive, uh, finally, uh, some preliminary designs and budgets uh, for the exhibitions. So uh, very, very early stages, but uh, at least it will give us something to work with. Uh, and then um, as we kind of work through that preliminary design, we will um, report back to this this committee as far as what our recommendation is before before we do anything. Um, we did receive, um, we do have items here um, in Terre Haute from French Lick from the 33 Brick Street location. Um, I'll have Shelley comment as far as kind of how many items and um, what the status of those items are. I do know some of them will need some <coughs> sort of um, work done to them uh, as they've been sitting there for, for some time. Uh, a couple of other items as far as the museum goes, Mark is working on a letter. Uh, I will ask the CIB to sign off on this letter. Uh, it is a request asking for material and uh, anything with trademarks as far as allowing access to or granting access to the CIB for the museum. And then uh, Mark Merrill and I met uh, with, we want to make sure obviously that the items are well protected. And uh, looking at film on the windows, the museum windows, as well as um, the lines, uh, it might be a combination. We are going. We do have um, requests out for bids on on those items. Uh, we will work with Pilferty as well, Mark, uh, as far as opinions go on the on the best way to protect the the items. Mark, did you want to highlight or add anything? No, no Terry, that uh, that letter is uh, is done, and we're uh, looking for Greg to deliver that uh, to the proper authorities related to uh, NBA rights for uh, film, video, photography, logos and such that we use. Um, that's very key uh, to create the, the media experience in the museum. And uh, the other piece is uh, Shelley working with uh, Bird's Materials, his personal collection of memorabilia that's now here in town. And Greg Gibson's materials are here stored close by. Uh, sort through those, understand what there is to work with. Um, objects are extremely key in this uh, museum situation. We've got to have the, the basketballs, the jerseys, the trophies, the photographs that um, help people bring up the bird experience. So uh, getting that material uh, sorted and uh, in shape for display uh, is really key to it. Yeah, answer any questions. Um, I know that uh, there was some discussion 
about, you mentioned film, Larry playing basketball. Um, film for the windows, right. Jenny, um, was, the, was the film, I think you were referring to? Correct, correct, the UV protectants. <laughs> yes, uh, and part of the problem is that uh, the film or whatever substance we put on those windows may void the warranty of the glass itself. So, um, is it hip for the hip for or somebody is going to look into that? Garmon, actually. Yeah, yeah. Garmon. Okay. Yes. I'll meet the gentleman out here Friday at 11 to walk it to uh, look at the UV film application. So, Mark, let me know about that. I, I actually experienced this in my own building. Oh. And, and was shocked to learn that you know applying film on a, on a piece of glass for which you're working uh, you know ours has been there 12 years and it's it's starting to peel kind of in all the corners so that kind of the shelf life is probably somewhere around 10 years mm -hmm. we've never had any problems with the glass right the glass but yet they were adamant about you know this could be a real problem and mine Mine's in my lobby up above, and so you know that could be a real issue if that ever happened. So I mean, we watch it like a hawk. But I was shocked to learn that. The, that. the general response we got from the UV film companies is that every glass company is going to have that mm -hmm. you know, language, but they've never seen it. They've never seen it. Yeah. Never failed. Right. One of one of the other items is so. that uh, who Vermont is speaking with. Uh, they have actually placed this film on several museums in Indianapolis yeah. to, to protect their collection. Sure. So it's, it's, we believe that there's enough knowledge there and it's, it's not. Like I said, it's been 12 years we haven't had a problem, but it was just a scary conversation mm -hmm. to have. I mean, you know, essentially you'd be standing a floor below a five of them, it's 38 feet in the air. So if one of those panels came out, the would be killing it. Right, right. Yeah. But I, I'll send you the info. And, and, and I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. So, um, and then as far as I believe, John, did, when did you want to discuss? There is a small change as far as the layouts. Um, I thought uh, once we heard from an update uh, on legal matters that we had to take a break and go downstairs things that we want to show you. Um, one is the museum. The second thing is a railing coming out of the garage uh, coming into the center. Um, at night time, uh, there's a difference of about two and a half, three feet that is unprotected. And, um, very, and, and at night time, if you're looking at it, the parking lot looks like it's right up to the level of the of the concrete, but it's not. So uh, I want to show you those two things, and then we'll come back up and uh, uh, close out here. Um, Ted from Booger Gardens Roots. Yeah, just one real quick update. I know um, a few of you have asked about the situation on the font and easement. Uh, those agreements have been drafted and been in font council scans for a month now and we've been periodically requesting updates so hopefully soon. Okay. Thank you Ted. Now our new business is a resolution 2022-06. Well what that is is if um, if we if there is an, an agreement in the board where we pick for these out of construction, a change order, then we have to ask the board for approval to take it out of food and beverage. That's correct. The board uh, last October requested that any, any expenditure for food and beverage outside the original budget is adopted to come before the board for uh, consideration and approval. So that's what this resolution does is contemplates um, expenditures for the railing at the museum as um, Mr. Mark was going to show us. Okay. So, if we could don't try the turn down there yeah <laughs>
write the permanent versus changing. Extend your contract on March 15th of 2023 under the same conditions, just changing the date. Okay. And then, sorry, Baron. Well, wait a minute. Let's go. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Not to tear you off to sign this other occasion or anything. Do you have a signature page? Yeah. 
just on his bench. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Well, I'll just say too, I'll echo what John was struggling to say earlier. <laughs> Fight through that, it's rough. Um, I, I, I couldn't have been any happier personally. I mean, everything went really well. The staff did a tremendous job. They had smiles on their faces at every, all those events. Um, got a lot of positive feedback. Of course, the first one, the last one, there were more people who were more typical of what we would be around, but that uh, open house day turned out great. I wish the weather had been a little better, but we had a great turnout. I've had people talking to me about the sense that uh, they came, and I think it was a good exposure to the community to be able to see it. We just got to figure out ways to keep getting people to come here. So, you know, I think the more people that see it, the more impressed they are, and you guys just really did a great job of getting those first three events, uh, you know, really couldn't have been done any better. So, much appreciated. Appreciate Feedback's that. been awesome. Okay, anybody yeah, else? Mayor, I'll, I'll echo your statements, of course. I, but I thought two things of as well. And, and I remember this as we were choosing Spectra at OBG 360 now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, the fact that they brought in Stefan, Will, and Mike, and different folks from others that are sharing their expertise, sending Lucy over to, to St. Charles, I think that's huge. I mean, for, for all involved, uh, and I, you know, I'm saying, I, I was sharing with Danilo as I was walking up the thing, where my table was seated, everybody that walked in that room, I mean, it's just, it's just like they were in awe of the place, and that was pretty cool to see. Uh, in fact, I couldn't tell you the last time I, I saw that in Terre Haute, so yeah, hats off to you and your team, you did a great job selecting them. So keep that up. It, it's the people that drive this. The beautiful, this building is beautiful, but the people will make it successful. So thanks. And the food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to the political things that we've been to. Oh, no. Where you say rubber chicken. Yeah. It's rubber oh. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we don't say I've been there a lot. It's it's Saturday good. nights. That's my kind of food, so I was just good. I was very happy with that. <laughs> and I'll echo Mayor and Mr. Patterson too, and commend you to Neil Juan. You're still hiring local, and you're also using local vendors. I think that's important for people to understand, and certainly appreciate you for doing that. So I know we should go out and show you. Yeah, I take yeah. Jay's wife. Yes. Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. She starts um, May 7th. We're really looking forward to her being on our team. I think it'd be great if by the end of the year maybe we could just have kind of that community impact from that. You know, oh, absolutely. I think those things go a long way. It's kind of stuff that David does when he tells us about you know, the events mm -hmm. that come to Tarot, but you know how much we've you know, generated yes. that way for our local businesses and all that. I think that would be a real good story to tell. I did talk to Elaine Beadle after the event the other night and asked her how we can come up with our local economic impact number, you know, Perfect. not just for out of town visitors, mm -hmm. but for our day visitors, even our folks that are here right now, their staff are eating here, you know. Um, kids might be driving from another area, so they're getting gas. You know, what is that number that we can use as a formula? So she's gonna put me in touch with someone in her office to help us come up with what our numbers are here. That's great. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, in this process, I asked the same question at the bottom. How, how, how many local subs are you using? And it was amazing to me at 75 or 80% or something like that. It was a huge number to find out how many local people work on this project. So maybe we need to get that out uh, to at some point. We'll figure out what that looks like. But I, I think that's all part of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, any other comments? Anything? I thought I saw a question here. Or maybe with the cost of the railing. I don't think we have it. Mark's meeting was it at? Yeah. I think it proved the railing and the museum redesign. I think the railing is at half to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll get it out. But you know, it won't be a big number, but we don't know. How are you with the person? <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next meeting will be May 25th, right back here in the same place. 
and I will work on a replacement for Steve, and we'll take review the committee assignments again, make sure everything's all evenly distributed, and uh, we'll see you next month. We adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.